the Teal House Farm. Our sheep are back from the butcher from being processed. We have two coolers full of meat. We sent two lambs to the butcher. They were about uh, eight months old, nine, not quite nine months old. And so we're gonna unpack it. We're gonna weigh it. We're gonna show you what we got. We're gonna show you how much weight it is and how much it comes out to per pound if you're ever interested in raising your own sheep. Hello. Just a little bit of background real quick. So these sheep are pasture raised. They were a Katahdin wool sheep cross. We did that on purpose last year. We just raised the hair sheep. Felt like they didn't get quite big enough to be worth. So we wanted a larger sheep, but we still wanted the parasite resistance of the hair sheep. So we got a cross, worked out really well, had no worm problems. They definitely were larger than last year's sheep. We sent them to processing, processing instead of doing it ourselves, specifically because with Sam, um, finishing school this summer and then starting his new job and the sheep had to be butchered about right now. They, there just wasn't time for him to help with it. I can't do it myself with all the kids and being pregnant. So they went to the butcher. So we'll show you what the cost was all in for having paid for the butchering and then what the cost per pound would have been had we been able to butcher it ourselves and kind of the savings to give you a better idea if this is something you want to try on your homestead. All right. Let's get it unpacked, let's get it weighed and sorted, and we'll show you what we got. Okay, let's take you on a quick tour and then we'll tell you our numbers. Pat, get down, buddy. He can't. He no, get down. Okay, so we get two neck roasts. Those are about two pounds each. Okay, and then we got the leg roast. These are so much bigger than last year's. If you go back and look at last year's cuts, these sheep are definitely much better suited for being a meat breed. It went a lot better. Um, so we got four leg roasts, and these roasts are almost all five pounds. So that's really going to go really far. The leg roasts and the neck roasts, I cook in the crock pot a couple different ways with different rubs. Pull them. You can put barbecue sauce on them. Lamb is really close to beef. Um, just has a slightly different flavor, but the texture is great, and the flavor is really subtle. And once you put some rub or sauce on it, you can really not tell the difference. Okay, and then this year we decided not to do lamb steaks. I did them last year, and the reason I didn't get them this year is because they're just so small, and they have a bone that runs through them. They're, like, impossible to eat because you just it's all bone, it feels like, um, compared to what, what you're used to with, like, a beef uh, sirloin kind of cut or a pork steak. So I decided just say no steaks, just give me burger instead. I have an awesome recipe for um, like lamb patties that you dip in like ketchup or barbecue sauce that the kids really like, or you can make meatballs with them. Um, so we got a bunch of lamb um, patties. Lamb is a little bit leaner than the beef, so it's like cooking a really lean ground beef. Just keep that in mind. Whole bunch of lamb chops, lots of those. I asked for soup bones this year, so we got great packets of soup bones. This will make a humongous, um, humongous pot of broth that we'll can later. We're just going to throw them in the freezer for now. Shanks, which are also really good for making soup, but they have more meat on them. So this would be something where you would like sear the shank and then cover it in water and vegetables to make a broth, pull the meat off of it, and then add, you know, soup vegetables to it and enjoy it in some sort of like noodle soup or things like that because there's still a good amount of meat on the shank. And then you also get several set of lamb ribs. I'm still not 100% sure how to cook the lamb ribs. So if anybody has a recipe that they like, they're different than the beef short rib or the pork ribs and the beef ribs. Um, they're just skinnier and so I don't know. Like I'm interested. If you guys have a recipe that you like, we don't have like 
a barbecue or a smoker. So I have to cook it inside, but I have like every cast iron pan ever vented. I got a crock pot and Insta pot. So if anybody has a great way to cook lamb ribs, let me know because I'd love to try something new. Because the last time I tried, it was just kind of a, a hot, greasy mess. So interested in what you guys might have. All right, let's put all this in the freezer now and then we will go ahead and get it, um, tell you all the numbers. All right, so we got all of our numbers figured out. And uh, this year we raised, it turned out to be 70 pounds of meat. Now I will say I did not get any organ meat this time. And I actually probably should have, I wasn't thinking. I usually get absolutely everything. And when she asked, I just said no. And then afterwards I was like, that was stupid. I should have gotten it. Cause even if we don't eat it, which I would probably try to make the kids eat it, just hide it in something, but you can give it to your dog um, too. So, it's, you know, they're, it's going to be the same price. With lamb, it tends to be a flat fee is what I've seen. It's not how heavy the animals are. It's just like our butcher that we use, it's $125 a lamb that you process. It's just flat fee. And so, you know, that organ meat is already paid for. And so there's no, there was no reason not to get it, um, except I just wasn't thinking. But so we ended up with 70 pounds um, back from the butcher, which is pretty good. So at 70 pounds of meat when I figure out what we spent to purchase the sheep because we didn't breed them here plus the butcher cost plus a tiny amount of feed um, cost it comes out to about six dollars and fifty cents a pound which may sound a little bit high to you if you are if you've never looked at lamb prices uh, lamb is just more expensive than beef and pork period because you get less meat on the animal so even if you're gonna buy it in the store or from a farmer, it's just going to be more expensive. So in a store, you're looking anywhere, depending on the cuts, between 10 and $15 a pound. So it's definitely cheaper to raise it ourselves. Had I butchered the lambs myself or ourselves here on the farm, which I think we're going to do next year because the schedule will be much less hectic because Sam will only be working uh, three twelves instead of school slash work seven days a week, which is what we've been doing it'll be, it would be $2.80 a pound. That is a great, that is a great price um, for meat. So we're definitely considering that next year. Now, just in comparison, last year we, we butchered two sheep, which were a little bit smaller, I think about five pounds less meat. So not a huge difference, but the sheep cost us $10.50 per pound. And the biggest difference was that this year we bought sheep lambs. We bought them earlier. So they were ready to butcher in September. Last year we had to butcher in December, which meant we spent two months buying hay to feed them out because we couldn't, we didn't have anything left on the pasture for them. It had already snowed and there just wasn't much out there and that greatly raised our cost per pound. So it was much smarter to aim for an earlier lambing uh, set, purchase that, um, and then butcher in September. Obviously there are some risks because if you have a, you know, lambs and you have just a horrible, super cold freeze, you know, they can get sick more easily, things like that. Um, but overall that worked out much better than us, much better cost difference. And um, we did buy, like I said, we bought a little bit of feed. The sheep are like 95% pasture raised here, just on our pasture out there but we use uh, sweet feed as a bribe. I buy the cheapest sweet feed there is. They get a little bit in the morning. Um, you just buy it in the huge like 50 pound bag, which lasts a long, a long time. Um, I did just a little bit in the morning and that way they associate that jingling sound of the feed in the pan as a good thing. And so if they ever get out of the fence or if we need to get them to come to the barn, like say we need to check out an injury or something in the middle of the day, they know that that sounds a good sound. They'll come running to it. So it's kind of like a little bit of an insurance policy, feeding them sweet feed more than it is um, any sort of like calorie content because uh, feeding them out into the fall, we uh, basically it was all pasture. There may have been a tiny, we may have needed like a bale of hay at the very beginning, but they were tiny. Like they were little baby sheep. They weren't big 80 pound sheep that needed a lot more hay. So it was really a nominal cost. So 650 a pound came out pretty good. Um, I think, 
I think I'm really happy with that price. I am really interested in trying to butcher it ourselves next year. We have some experience. Sam's done deer before, you know, we've butchered chickens, um, but never tried sheep. So it'll be a new experience, but I think it'll be worth it. Not even just the money saving, but the time. The butcher we use is great. We have no nothing negative to say about them other than just like every other butcher I think out there, they are super busy. It's hard to schedule a time. And um, because sheep are a fall butcher animal, we run into deer season here, which even more kind of bottlenecks in the time that you can have them butchered because they will not butcher or they're not legally allowed to butcher deer and farm animals um, simultaneously. So the facility basically closed down just for deer come uh, bow and then rifle season, which is a huge chunk of the fall. So it really, you really get kind of bottled neck. You can either like get them done in September or you can get them done in December. And so um, doing it ourselves will give us a lot more flexibility and making sure that we're butchering exactly when we want to, not when we have to, which um, I think is just always a good thing. Uh, if you're curious uh, about eating lamb, you can check out our canning pantry cooking videos. I'll link that playlist below. We can some of the lamb meat, um, some of the roast meat in barbecue sauce just for quick sandwiches too, which is another way we use it up. But generally we just use it um, a lot like you would use a beef, um, any sort of beef recipe. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you all next time.